Happy New Year's guys. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the best coding habits to adopt in 2024. If you're new here, my name is Aman. I'm a software engineer and computer science graduate. And these coding habits helped me land five software engineering internships in college and also a full-time software engineering job. Habit number one is three hours of deep work every day. Deep work has become very understood and common in the cultural zeitgeist. If you've read any kind of self-improvement or productivity book, you've probably heard of it before. But just because it's said often doesn't mean you actually do it every day. Recently, after completing a lifestyle challenge where I lived like Lex Friedman for seven days, I've been really reflecting on the power of deep work and the fact that People like me and you don't do it enough. I know this because back in college, I would often get assigned essays that were due a month from then. And like a normal college student, I would procrastinate and wait till the last day to get it started. But on that last day, I would go to a cafe, buy a coffee and bang out an essay that was supposed to take a month in four hours. Think about that. Something the professor expected would take a month of work could be done in four hours and with a decent grade too. That's the power of deep work. Often projects balloon into taking weeks or months of effort when they could really just be done in an afternoon if you sit down and actually do it. Like I said, the way you know this is true is the fact that you can do that assignment within four hours if it's due that night. So why can't you just harness that focus all the time? If you did, you'd be a studying machine. You'd get an incredible amount of work done. The truth is that the modern world is against you. It's almost as if your environment was designed by someone who's trying to get you to not do deep work. You have your phone at all times. You're constantly checking social media. Your roommates are always bothering you. I was actually at a cafe recently where I looked over to the side and saw this girl who had her phone propped up on her laptop and she was scrolling through Instagram reels while studying. She would read one sentence, then look down on her phone and scroll through three to five reels. I looked at her and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Put that shit away and actually focus. So if the world is against you, how do you actually do deep work? For me, the biggest hack is to one, time block my entire day so that I know exactly what I should be doing at any given moment. And two, hide my phone. That's it. Literally by throwing my phone across the room like this, or putting it in my bag or leaving it in a different room, my focus immediately gets better by 50%. It's insane. So tomorrow when you start your deep work session, decide on what you're gonna work on beforehand and make sure to not have your phone with you. Either leave it in your bag, leave it at home, or at a minimum, turn on focus mode so that you're not bombarded with all these notifications. Before we get on to the next habit, I just wanted to take a second to thank Scrintle for sponsoring this video. If you guys have ever heard of the Zettelkasten method of note-taking, it's a technique that emphasizes the interconnected nature of thoughts and learning. And I was a huge fan of the style of learning a while back, but I never really had an app that allowed me to visually map out notes and connect things. That's the advantage of Scrintle. It makes mapping your notes together visually really easy, and there's basically no learning curve. I'm in the app right now, and as you can see, it's very visual. You have this open canvas where you can put anything you want. I have a bunch of operating system notes in here, and the benefit is that you can connect different ones of them together, and you can even double click and immediately open up to a full vertically integrated note-taking platform. And I can immediately reference other pages in the app. So if I go here, I have a plus and type in swapping. I can double click on that and open up the swapping notes off to the side there. So it really promotes high level interconnected thinking. The truth is that when it comes to computer science, everything is connected when you really think about it. For example, I took an AI class last semester and there were so many references to linear algebra and I wish I could have all of my notes for linear algebra and AI side by side so we could look at them and examine the differences and similarities. Some other great features of Scrintle are that you can easily import all of your notes from Notion and Obsidian. You can change the colors of the cards. You can swap between light and dark mode and you can even embed PDFs and media into any of your cards in Scrintle. If you're interested in giving Scrintle a try, you can use the link in the description or use the code AMON10 at checkout to get a 10% discount. Back to the video. Habit number two is to solve two lead code problems per week, every week. Something young students don't realize is that in this field of software engineering, you will be fired. You're fired. In the tech industry, it's the norm for companies to lay off thousands of people all at once like it's nothing. And when you get fired, you'll be so glad that you kept up this lead code habit. There's this common misconception going around that you only do lead code up until you get hired and then you stop. And I think that's terrible advice. 
There's this quote I often return to, and it's, luck is where preparation meets opportunity. And this perfectly sums up Leak Code. Leak Code is one of those things that takes months and months of consistent effort to build and maintain. And if you do this, when you get fired or you decide to leave your job, you'll be perfectly poised to strike at that new job opportunity that just appeared from the tall grass. For a computer science major, Leak Code is like going to the gym. Think about it. You don't just wait till you already have a date with a girl and then go to the gym eight hours a day the week beforehand. No, you lift weights, hit the gym, consistently for a few years and then when you run into an attractive girl at a bar or a cafe you walk up to her and she gives you her number your physique is not something you build the week before it's something that takes years to create and maintain and lead code is the exact same you spend years grinding lead code honing your coding interview skills and then when microsoft walks over to you with a beautiful job opportunity you strike and seize it sure maybe you'll do a little bit more practice the week of the interview but you've already done the majority of the work another quote i really like is I would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Again, if you were a warrior, you wouldn't wait till the war starts to start training. No, you'd be honing your skills for years and years, and then when the enemy approaches, within one strike of your sword, you take off his head. The truth is that, I've been slipping up lately. I'm rusty, and the killer who's been grinding lead code for months, he very well could fuck me and take my job. The reality is that if you spend one to two hours per week grinding lead code in your free time, which is not much at all, you'll probably end up earning over $100,000 extra over five to 10 years just from this one habit. Habit number three is to confront the unknown. As a coder, there's a constant temptation to just avoid things you're unfamiliar with. You have a genuine fear of the unknown. In my job, anytime I interact with a project or an area of a code base I'm unfamiliar with, I get a little wave of anxiety because I'm anticipating the amount of work I'm gonna have to put in to actually understand it. It's like that feeling you have when you look at your homework or a textbook and you have no idea what anything means. You just get hit with this wave of anxiety. But crucially, that's where the greatest learning happens. You want that feeling of stress and difficult exploration because in there is where you'll find the greatest growth. So both as a software engineer and a student, 50% of the time should be spent exploring something you are not comfortable with. As a software engineer, this means picking up areas of the code base in new projects that you've never touched before, even if you don't want to. It's funny, every time I start a new project, I feel completely lost and I feel like it's such a difficult challenge that I don't want to get involved with. But then after I finish, it's crazy. It's like I magically somehow look back and fully understand what I didn't know before. But crucially, you cannot get caught up in that good feeling of understanding and get complacent. As a student, you should constantly be working to address your blind spots. You do this in your classes anyway, but you should still make it a habit even outside your classes. An exercise I employ you to do is to take out a pen and paper and write every everything that you're shit at. For me, I'm super bad at running, I'm kind of awkward in new social situations, and I don't know JavaScript that well. And a great next step for me would be to go run a 5k, go to an event where I don't know anyone, or go join a hackathon and force myself to use JavaScript. By doing this, you remove the choice from the matter, and you'll look back a couple months later and be so happy that you decided to cover your blind spots. The truth is that in this industry, you are either growing or you're dying. Companies select for people who are constantly improving themselves, and if you're not doing this, you are slowly moving down the totem pole. I actually know people personally who were fired, not because they did something wrong, not because they screwed up, but because they got comfortable, because they stopped improving. They stopped confronting the unknown. So don't do this. Spend 50% of your time in an an area that you're unfamiliar with. Habit number four is to ask people to roast you on the regular. In other words, ask and give feedback. One of my favorite quotes from the legendary Richard Feynman is, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. If you think back to the hardest moments in your life, they usually come when you're hit with something that you didn't anticipate. Most of the time, if something completely expected happens, it's really not that big of a deal. This is kind of a morbid example, but think about it. If your 90 year old grandma dies in her sleep, it's honestly fine. You kind of saw it coming. She lived a good, happy, healthy life. People are happy with that death. But if your 15 year old cousin gets hit with a car, that's the most insane thing that's ever happened to you because it's unexpected, because you didn't see it coming. So if we map this back to being a software engineer in coding, the most difficult challenges you'll experience are when you're not prepared. And getting regular feedback from the people around you will help buffer against these situations because often the people around you can see problems before you can. If you simply ask your peers around you to critically analyze what you're doing, it will blow your mind how much you'll learn. Getting and giving feedback is a superpower and most people don't do it because they're afraid. I find 
find myself being a little afraid of getting feedback because I might hear something I don't want to hear. That's the truth. I'm reluctant to ask my teammates and my manager for feedback because I'm afraid of what I'm going to hear. And that's fucking ridiculous because it's not like those people don't already think those things about you. You not hearing it, you avoiding it will not change anything. If my teammate Harrison secretly thinks I'm a shit software engineer, but doesn't tell me, that doesn't help me at all. All you avoiding the truth will do is one, stop you from actually improving. And two, when you're hit with the consequences of your behavior, you'll just be caught off guard. Feedback is a strict good. There's no negative to getting consistent, actionable feedback. So how do you actually apply this? Well, if you're a student, you should be asking your professors, TAs, even other students to look at your homework and projects and just give you things to improve upon. And more than anything, feedback in your situation is talking to the people who are ahead of you and just mining them for insights and asking them for personalized advice as to your situation. If I, as a high school or college student, had found someone who was just three to four years ahead of me and asked them to look at my situation and give me advice, I would have supercharged my progress. It would have been insane how much more I would have learned. Because at the end of the day, you can only learn so much by internally analyzing your own situation. If you just find someone who's only two to three years ahead of you, they can provide a perspective that you'll never find yourself. That tailored advice can change everything. As a software engineer, it's a little bit more obvious. All you need to do is consistently ask your manager for feedback every one to two weeks. And it's not easy. It's terrifying to hear negative feedback from your boss, but you have to do it. Because by being comfortable with letting people roast you, you will expand your mind hugely. Habit number five is to keep a work log. Someone once said, the faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. As a software engineer, keeping a work log is an amazing habit. If you're a software engineer, you probably want to get promoted as fast as possible. And something you might not realize is that promotions are dished out based on annual performance reviews. So effective immediately, I am promoting you from assistant to the regional manager to assistant regional manager. Basically, every 8 to 12 months, your manager will sit you down and do a performance review of you. And when that happens, you will have to negotiate and convince your manager that you deserve a raise. It's a trial by fire. You have to convince your manager that you deserve a promotion. And it's a lot easier to do when you have some solid evidence in front of you. In the past, when I've done performance reviews to negotiate for internship return offers, my manager only really warned me a few days beforehand. So I didn't have all that much time to compile all this evidence, which is why you need to make the habit of keeping a daily work log. At the end of the day, just open up a note in Notion and write down one, what did you accomplish today? Two, what are you planning on doing tomorrow? And three, what is the biggest thing you plan on achieving by the end of the week? And over the next few months, this will compound such that you can look back in your work log and see that you've actually made amazing progress, even if you don't remember what you've done. But conversely, even as a normal person, as a non-software engineer, keeping a work log is an amazing habit. I actually do this with my calendar. So with my calendar, I time block every single day. So I can look back six months ago and see what an exact week of my life looked like. And that gives me incredible clarity. Let's say I had a bad habit six months ago that I promised myself I was going to stop. And while looking back, I realize I'm still doing it. Or you told yourself you were gonna start some new habit or goal that you just never ended up doing. A work log reveals yourself to you. Because like I said before, you are the easiest person to fool. And a journal is undeniable evidence that you are not sticking to your goals and that you need to change. If you guys are interested in landing your dream internship in 2024, I've actually decided to launch the first cohort of the Software Engineering Intern Academy. Over the last four years, I've managed to get six internship offers at companies like Shopify, Amazon, and HP. And it's at the point where I could almost confidently land an internship at any company. The thing about getting a high paying internship is that it's a very systematic process. How precise is your resume? Are you actually practicing problems that will show up on the interview? Did you get a referral to the company? It's an eight week program starting in February. So if you want to lock in an internship in 2024, now's your chance. The spots are going to go quickly as I'm only accepting five people. So if you have what it takes, you can book your free consultation call with the link down below and we can talk through the program and see if it's a good fit for you. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.